Hi, Sam here with Batch Stoves, and today we're going to be doing a peach cobbler redo. Um, the first attempt, we used some Bisquick um, biscuit mix. We added some cinnamon to it and used a peach cup. And uh, a gentleman that saw that video sent me a suggestion for a recipe uh, that he uses in a Dutch oven and so I thought I would give that a try I'll leave his name um, in the comments section I can't remember it exactly uh, Inse BCR I believe is his YouTube username I appreciate the comments and the suggestion so uh, if you're watching this video this is uh, I think this is your recipe we're gonna give it a shot um, I tried to portion this out for one serving, so we'll see how it goes. I'm going to be using the Batch Stoves BS 1.1 uh, adjustable flame stove. This stove works really well for uh, things that need to simmer and also boil. It's a very universal stove. I really like it. It works great. And uh, I have a one ounce fuel bottle and we're going to be putting one ounce in here inside the stove is a carbon felt wick and one ounce is just just completely saturates the wick uh, and leaves a little bit of liquid on top and that's that's the one ounce mark but we're going to be using heat one ounce and what I have here is uh, just some cake flour. Uh, I think he suggested a spice cake mix, but I didn't have any spice cake, so I just used regular cake flour and added some cinnamon into it. And what he suggests we do is, I'm not going to be using any kind of uh, cooking spray or anything in this. I'm not sure that that's such a good idea, but if it's going to ruin the dry baking dish i'd rather it ruin mine than yours so uh, we'll try it but nothing in there we are going to add he says two dollop uh, a dollop of butter but i've got like a one inch thick slice i'm just going to stick that right in the center uh, of the dry baking dish and then add the peaches straight in here and he said reserve some of the liquid to uh, drizzle on top of the cake mix but it's kind of hard to do uh, so anyways, I have a quarter of a cup of the cake mix, and I'm just going to throw that right on top. Like so. And going to, it says drizzle the rest of your juice over the top of the dry cake mix don't stir anything and then I have another sliver of butter here about an eighth of an inch thick and I'm just going to put that right on the top get this out of the way and you can see what we have here and uh, it's coming up to about uh, halfway I should say maybe not quite halfway on the dry baking dish we're going to be using <clears throat> our 12 centimeter dry baking combo let me get the stove lit and inside our dry baking combo we've got a 
aluminum. This is just an aluminum foil ring. I do make and sell um, one inch baking rings. They're on my website uh, if you prefer. This works just as good. Um, it's completely up to you. You can adjust it to whatever size you want. And we're going to put our cobbler mix in there. I'm not real sure on the baking time, but I believe um, probably in the 20 minute range or so. You can see the stove. That's on high, and once it gets warm, it'll really kick a flame up. It'll kick a flame up about five or six inches. It can get pretty intense. But I just want to get the stove uh, warmed up a little bit. And uh, once the flame starts to pick up, we'll turn it down. That's probably good there. And then just slide the switch over, uh, slide the over. You can see how it dies down. And we'll put our 10 centimeter cook pot on there. And let me turn this light back on. And we'll start a timer. Use a windscreen. So, show you the uh, kind of flame pattern we have. It'll pick up in a little while when the stove gets really good and hot and it'll pick up some, but that's really all you need for dry baking. You don't need that much. So, we're right at a minute. We'll come back and check on this in 10 minute increments or so. Uh, sometimes these baking videos can be a little boring. So, we will not bore you with all the details and and we'll come back and uh, check on it in about 10 minutes. Okay, we're back at it. We're right at the 10 minute mark. Show you the uh, flame pattern that we got going on here. And we're at the 10 minute mark. Still going good. And what we got going on inside? Can't really tell anything. It smells good, but you can't really tell anything. Ten minutes in, uh, not much really going on. As you can see, it's kind of starting to bubble up a little bit. So. Rather than bore you to death, we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll cut and uh, come back at the 20 minute mark. Okay, so we're at the uh, 20 minute mark. And I can tell you that if you could smell this, you would know how delicious it smells. Uh, something about cinnamon and sugar. Okay, it's starting to... You can see it's bubbling. It's starting to bake. Um, we're at 20 minutes right now. So I'm thinking I need to probably try to check this about every um, five minutes or so. Let me show you the um, what type of flame we're maintaining here. Okay, we're just maintaining the same flame we've been maintaining. Now... A note on these carbon felt windscreens. Uh, of course, I'm indoors, and so 
I'm not really using it to block the wind but what's nice about it is you can use it to kind of help regulate the temperature um, around the, the baking pot a lot of times when I'm out on in the in the woods and stuff I don't even use a windscreen uh, unless of course it's needed most of the time if it's just not no wind or, or very light wind I don't use it at all um, it works out fine but if you're dry baking you may want to use it to help kind of just control the temperature around the um, baking dish so let's uh Let's check back on in this. Uh, check back on this in about five or six minutes or so. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take for this to bake, but uh, it's definitely looking more towards the 30-minute range. Okay, so we're at 31 minutes. Let's see what we've got. Oh, it's starting to gum up really nice. Yeah, it's starting to uh, thicken. It's looking really good. In fact, it may be done right there. So, tell you what I'm going to do. So that I don't risk burning it. Um, I'm just, we're at 32 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take it off. And... We'll just let it sit there for a little while. And kind of finish uh, thickening and cooling off. We'll go ahead and put this stove out and uh, now I have a little piece of metal that I just a little piece of tin foil basically it's a piece of this foil liner in my kit that I take on the trail and I just lay it over there and cover that up and smother it but I don't have one in here so take a look at this I tell you I'm really pleased with the way this looks and smells It smells really good and it looks really delicious so I'm gonna give this about uh, another 10 minutes or so just to kind of cool down and finish uh, let's say I tell you what I'm gonna leave it I'll give it about oh, five more minutes in the pot to kind of congeal and thicken and then I'll take it out of the pot and give it another few minutes to cool off all right and we'll check back Okay, we're about uh, oh, 41 minutes. I can't remember. I think it was uh, probably just been probably about 10 minutes or so. Uh, I got kind of sidetracked. My wife had a couple of questions. Um, so let's take a look and see what we got. Here's our cobbler, and as you can see, I mean. It looks really good. Uh, it's probably about half, half way up the side of the 10 centimeter baking dish. It's still extremely hot, and um, I think if it cools down, it'll get as it cools down, it'll get thicker. So I'm going to give it a, a little bit more time to um, cool down. So I want it to be nice and cool when I my my plan is to try to normally I would probably just eat this out of here if I was on the trail but I want to kind of show you what what the dish was going to look like so probably what I'll do is scrape it out onto a plate but I want to let it kind of I want to let it get a little cooler and a little uh, a little thicker before I try to scrape it out of the plate so I mean out of the dry baking dish so let's let it cool off and then I'll come back and we'll do that 
Okay, so we've let this cool off and I can actually hold it now. It's still warm. But let me see if I can show you this. So this is what it looks like. And it's 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 gooey and it's thickened up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it down on a plate so that you can kind of get a idea of what it's going to look like normally if i was out on the trail i'd just eat directly out of this but just to show you and i'm kind of curious myself how it turned down Tell you that looks like it's gonna just you know with some water that'll wash right out and uh, our crust is it turned into dough it's looks really good let me try it you can see it's it's fairly thick oh, don't know if you can see but you can see it's it's fairly thick get a better view but you can see, yeah, it's nice and thick. So it looks really well. Looks just like peach cobbler. Amazing, isn't it? So, let's try it. Okay, I have to tell you that um, Peach Cobbler Redo is a success. Um, this is definitely the recipe to go with if you want to have Peach Cobbler on the trail. Uh, I tell you, this is really delicious. Um, so it was a quarter cup of dry cake mix with a little bit of cinnamon added to it. One peach cup, uh, two little dollops of, two little thin slices of butter. You could probably use margarine. Um, I'm sure it'd be fine. And wow, incredible. That's really delicious. I want to thank uh, in Insay BCR is his YouTube username. I want to thank you very much for this recipe and the suggestions on this. Uh, what a success. I really like that. In fact, I think I'm going to now try this same thing with the applesauce and see how that turns out. This is really delicious. So, really, uh, I think you should give this a try at home uh, and then take it out on the trail. I'm Sam at Batch Stoves. Thanks for watching the videos. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stop by and visit us at www.batchstoves.com. Thanks for watching.